Hi guys, it's Stephanie. And Shelby. Today we are making something very special. Yep, it's a 3D teddy bear cake. But it's not just any teddy bear cake, it's Theodora from a new game that we got called Stuff Fables. When we got this game, we immediately fell in love with the art and just had to make a cake for it. So if you've ever wondered how to make one of those 3D cakes, then you've come to the right place. Let's get started! To make this odd shaped cake, I first had to make a cake stand to hold it up. To create this armature, I'm using a quarter inch and three eighths inch threaded rod and pieces of wood that my husband cut into shape for me. Each connection needs a nut and washer. I also added lock washers to this one to make it extra sturdy. I also have two more wood boards prepared that I will add on later. There are a couple of changes I might make to this armature if I ever recreate it, and I will point those out along the way. Everything needs to be covered, so I've used a combination of foil and plastic wrap to cover it. Time for the cake. We picked vanilla cake and white chocolate buttercream frosting because stuffed animals are full of white stuffing. We layered up our cake with cake and the frosting. I know that the belly of my cake is eight inches tall, so after the cake was up to four inches, I knew I needed to add a board and dowels for support. My dowels are already cut to the same size and I push them down into the cake and then I slide my board down. My board didn't go all the way down. I suspect there was some foil in the way. Oh well, we'll just fill that part in with buttercream. Now I can add two more layers of cake. Before I moved on to the head, I wanted to carve the belly just so I could get an idea of what it will look like. Next, I'm coating it in buttercream frosting and I fill in that gap in the front. Do you see how it's moving as I put the buttercream frosting on? For next time, I'll probably use a thicker 3 8 an inch rod for the legs to make it a little bit sturdier. Moving on to the head. Here, I'm adding more wooden dowels and the board to support the head. And then I'm covering it in more foil. For the arms, I'm bending a six gauge armature wire into the arm shape and I'm covering it in more foil. And then I'm attaching it to the board. We then begin layering up the cake and buttercream for the head. If I were to redo this cake, I would probably make the center threaded rod a little bit taller to help support the head. And now I'm carving it just a bit to round it out and then I cover it completely in more buttercream. It will then need to chill in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. After the cake was nice and cold, I began carving her into the exact shape I wanted. She needed thinned out all around her belly and then I moved on to her head and rounded it out too. It was a last minute decision to make the legs out of rice cereal treats. This is my daughter's favorite part because she gets to eat all the leftover pieces. We molded the rice cereal treats around the threaded rod to create the legs. And then we used modeling chocolate to create the under part of the teddy bear. I didn't fill it in all the way underneath because modeling chocolate is pretty expensive and it's very heavy. I just use it in the areas that you could see. We then used more modeling chocolate to cover the rice cereal treats to make it nice and smooth. Let's move on to the face. For the eyes, I'm using a circle cutter to mark where I want them and I use my X-Acto knife to remove the cake in those areas. For the bear muzzle, I've mixed some extra cake with a little bit of buttercream to create some cake pop filling. I rolled the filling into a ball and I'm pressing it into the cake. Using cake pop filling is so much easier than having to carve it. Next, I'm giving it one more final coating in buttercream and then I chill it until it's completely cold. It's time for the fondant. I'm rolling out some chocolate fondant to about a quarter inch thick. I drape it over my rolling pin and then I place it onto the head. This cake will need to be covered in panels because of its odd shape. I'm using my hands to smooth out the fondant and I pull the ends of the fondant together and cut away the excess with scissors. I use my hands to smooth out the seam as best as I could. Next, we used our modeling tools to scratch fur into the fondant. After we've given it lots of fur, I'm moving on to the mouth. I first draw what I'd like the mouth to look like with my modeling tool and then I cut it away with my X-Acto knife. Onto the body. I've rolled out my fondant and I place it onto the front of the bear. We smooth it out as best we can and we then remove the excess. We repeat the process of scratching fur onto it. 
Theodora has some cute features on her body that I don't want to miss. First up, she has a tear that looks like it was stitched back up. So I'm using my modeling tool to create the tear and stitches. She also has two patches on her chest, which I'm making out of fondant. I am cutting out the heart and square patches with cutters and I attach them to the cake with edible glue. I then use my X-Acto knife to create the stitches. For her legs, I repeat the same process of rolling out fondant and wrapping it around the leg. I use edible glue to attach the fondant to the modeling chocolate. Next up are the ears. I'm rolling out a thicker piece of fondant and I use a circle cutter to create the circles. I then square off the edges with my hands and I cut them down a little bit to size. I then use a modeling tool to sort of press into the ears to make an indention and then I dust the inside of the ears with food coloring dusts. I can't forget to give the ears some fur too. To help support the ears, I'm brushing some edible glue onto a toothpick and I push them into the ears. I carefully insert the ears into the cake. Let's move on to the nose. The nose is a piece of black fondant that I modeled into a triangular shape. I again used a toothpick to help secure it into place. I need to fill in the hole where the mouth is, so I rolled out a thin piece of black fondant, I put it into place, and then cut away the excess. On to the eyes. The eyes are two small balls of black fondant that I attached with edible glue. We cut pieces of brown fondant for her eyebrows and created more fur with our modeling tools. This is when she really starts to come to life. Here, we are brushing some glaze onto her eyes to make them shiny. The glaze is a teaspoon of food grade alcohol mixed with a teaspoon of corn syrup. She's starting to look like a mean teddy bear, but she's not mean at all. She's just very serious about protecting her owner. Her arms are up next. I modeled a piece of fondant into the arm shape and I made a slit in the back so I could press it into the covered wire. I repeated the process on the other arm and gave them both some fur. Theodora is wearing either a scarf or a blanket around her neck, I'm not sure which, but to make it I've rolled out a thin piece of fondant and I'm creating the folds by placing my modeling tool under the fondant. I press the ends together, brush her neck with edible glue, and attach the scarf. While I have the purple fondant out, I'm going to add a blanket to the board to cover the foil. This part is pretty easy because you can lay the fondant anywhere. You just need to fold under the edges. Moving on to her sword. I'm creating the handle of the sword out of fondant and I attach it in the same way that I did the arm by cutting a slit in it and using edible glue to attach it to the wire. For the blade of the sword, I went with modeling chocolate. Modeling chocolate holds its shape better than fondant, which is why I picked it. I use my X-Acto knife to cut away the edges to make it look nice and sharp. I next created her measuring tape belt by rolling out a thin piece of fondant. I then used my ribbon cutter to cut a strip, and then I rolled it up so I can easily move it over to the cake. I brushed edible glue onto the cake and then unrolled the belt onto her waist. I used some extra pieces of the strip of fondant to make a knot in the belt. Next, I'm hand painting the lines on the belt with food coloring gel mixed with a drop of food grade alcohol. Teddy bears are always a little dirty, so here I'm dusting her with a little brown food coloring dust. The final detail. Shelby has rolled out a thin piece of yellow fondant and is using a star cutter to cut out fondant stars. She is then attaching them to the fondant on the board. We're finished. She turned out so cute. I'm really proud of this one. Thank you for watching. We hope you learned how to make your own teddy bear cake. Be sure to look for us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. See you next time. Bye. Bye.